Welcome to 3D.sk, human photo reference for 3D artists and game developers. On this site you can find thousands of images, from studio photo reference, to street photo reference. We also have a selection of animals on our site. We have some costumes, we have weapons, armor. We also have 3D scans of bodies and heads, clothing, animals, all the aforementioned above, and 3D maps and textures. Hello and welcome to this tutorial series. In this series we're going to be taking a look at 3D scans from 3D.sk. The scans that you get off 3D.sk are highly detailed and will help you in any project that you want to do whether it be games or film, personal projects, competitions or anything like that. They're highly detailed and they're more than, more than you need to be able to create a realistic human. So you don't have to create it from scratch and you just need to do some small edits and some small changes to make it so it's usable. So I'm just going to go to import now. I'm going to import some raw 3D scan data that we've got. So I'm going to import Milan Balaz. I think that's how you pronounce it, sorry if it's not. So now that I've clicked and dragged it out, you can see that it's very highly detailed. But if we just zoom in and change the texture to something that's a bit more readable, you can see that it's picked up a lot of the detail on it on his skin. It's picked up all the hair, picked up the shape of his ear, which can be quite hard to do sometimes. It's also picked up his eye. We'll show you in a sec when I import the texture how detailed it really is. So how about we just get in the texture for now so let's go to texture and if you just go to the same file that you downloaded the 3d scan from and choose the same name now we need to do a step here which is flipping this vertically going to texture map and applying the texture onto the 3d scan now you can see the detail in its entirety so you can see that it's got all the color information, all the texture information that you need to carry on this. So by little edits and things we need to do to improve this, I mainly mean getting rid of this cap, getting rid of little artifacts, getting rid of the hair, perhaps the eyebrows as the geometry isn't too great, fixing up the eyes a little bit, creating an oral cavity, and then replacing all these things with our own meshes later on, such as hair, we can get some reference off 3D.sk, which it has millions of. We can get whatever hair we like. We could go with a normal hairstyle, or we could even put a mohawk on him or something, but that'll be decided later. We'll most likely be going for a normal hairstyle. But just to give you an idea of using 3D.sk, you can really be creative, because they have so much reference available for you to download. So, first thing we want to do before we do anything is try and get this in a state that is symmetrical enough for us to work on. Now we don't want to use pure symmetry because that wouldn't be appropriate and it, wasn't, it wouldn't look as realistic as it does now with symmetry. So we can achieve this easily by, first of all, I want to make sure that this is centered. So I'm just going to lock unlock, reset orientation and go to unmask mesh center. Okay, and then I'm going to click the same two buttons with the lock on. Okay, now that we've decided it's in the center, let's go to, let's first of all duplicate this. I'm duplicating this because now we always have the, the mesh that we started with. Every time we make an, a big edit, we want to create a duplicate so we can always go back. And also every time you close your session or every say 30 minutes you want to save your session as well. These are just some things that are important to make sure you you can always go back. You're not going through a linear pipeline. You always want a way to backtrack. So first of all I want to append a cube 3D and I'm just going to scale it on the x-axis. 
I scaled the wrong thing there, sorry. Switch to the subtool and then scale it until you can just see it, like so. Okay. I'm now going to go to this tool, the head, and rotate it so I get roughly the symmetry that I want. So let's say that that's where I want it for now. Let's go back to this tool and let's control and drag and get it in about the center of the eye. Now we can go to mirror and weld and we can see that it's fairly symmetrical. Let's go back to our tool and just see if we can make it maybe a bit more symmetrical. Maybe it just needs moving. Hmm, this is going through the glabella. This is going through roughly the middle of the nose. His nose is a little bit slanted and this is going straight through the middle of the lips from what I can see. Just going to reset the orientation on this. Maybe just move it like that slightly. Okay. Let's have a look how that looks overall. It's also going through the middle of the neck. Maybe we can also duplicate this over here. Let's have a look at the back. To me, this seems pretty symmetrical. Let's just go to polygroups. Let's go to auto groups. Just going to select just this one and the mesh is partially hidden. Okay, I'm going to press Control All to mask just this plane. I'm going to go invert and then I'm going to press Control. I'm going to get it right on the edge of the face on either side. Of course, you want to use mirror and weld. That's lining up okay. This gives us a bit of a better idea where our mesh needs to go, maybe. A little bit maybe here. How's the eyes lining up? The mouth is lining up okay. I think this is about as perfect as we're going to get it. So let's just delete this now. Now that we've decided that this is going to be our rough center. One thing we can do now is try and make this more straight. Now this is a choice whether you want to do this or not, but I'm just going to go trim rectangle. And just get rid of this area and make it straight. But you can see that this creates some problems with our texture. And we really don't want that. So we'll be doing that in a later stage once we've got rid of the, the head cap or the equipment. So that's what we'll most likely be doing in the next tutorial. We'll be getting rid of this head cap and then we'll be replacing it with a, a random primitive such as a sphere. We could use a sphere to move it into place and then we can use the sphere to recreate the rest of the head once we've got rid of this rest of the head mesh using a masking tool. Now I'm going to create a duplicate now because this is the so you have like steps so you can rename these if you like. Uh, let's call this lineup. You can't use capital letters or you can't use caps lock. So I'm just going to call this line up. I'm going to call this original. I'm going to call this one cap removal. So 
So once you've done that, we can move on to the next tutorial. Uh, so I'll see you then. In the next tutorial, as I said, we're going to be covering mostly the cap. Maybe we'll do some other things if we have time, but just to make sure the video doesn't get too long. So see you in the next tutorial. Bye. Welcome to the end of this tutorial. Feel free to comment with feedback and suggestions below, and also comment on what you would like to see in future videos. Thanks and goodbye.